So this is the entrance to printmaking. Uh, you'll see that under our current orders, this door is to be used for entrance only. If IDs are keyed, use it here. It will momentarily unlock this door, but not this one. So let's open up here and come on in. <clears throat> the shop is organized into various areas according to technique. However, if we start right here, you'll see immediately upon entering that this is where we store our folded chairs. So if you need a chair, you grab one here, and when you're done from that work session, you put it back. We have our newsprint. We have open aprons that are open for anybody to use. Please put them back when you're done. We have a billboard here. Moving back in a little further. We quickly realize we're in what we think of as our screen printing area of the shop, which is basically this third to half of the room uh, on this side. So we have vacuum tables. We have the steel top tables, which are general work tables, but often get used for screen printing. Working back here, we have all of our screen printing inks, our screen storage, uh, sink back there. You'll see screen storage at various places around the shop, organized according to size and what classes use them. Right behind the camera here is where we dry screens after cleaning them. And we also have some smaller screen storage there. Let's move back before coming back to this corner later. Towards this end of the screen printing area, you have more general work tables that can be used for screen printing or for other things like drawing. You've got a back counter that we use primarily for screen maintenance and, and stretching and prep. You'll see running along the window side of the room are ventilation hoods. In a few minutes, I'll show you how to turn those on. This is obviously a dirty cleaning area. This sink here, it does get dirty, but just because it does get dirty doesn't mean that you don't need to clean up after yourself. Um, moving this way, you can see here is yet a third area we store squeegees. So on the back of that drying rack are some extra large squeegees. You might have noticed small squeegees are stored here. And behind the camera are medium sized, the large to medium sized squeegees there. There's one other place squeegees are stored. Moving over this way. And that is on the back of this drying rack right here. So that's the small to medium size. So they're organized by size and you just kind of learn where they are as you go. Um, there are two, four, six, eight, nine vacuum tables for screen printing, plus a tenth that is oversized with the one arm back there. That's generally reserved for advanced students and uh, faculty. These are drying racks. They are spaced throughout the room. Um, we'll cover those rules later. Moving this way, this central area of the room is kind of what we think of as our critique area. So this is our critique wall. The wall has been magnetized, so we just use these rare earth magnets to attach prints to the wall for critiques. So no push pins, no nails, nothing that would puncture the surface of the wall here. Um, moving this way, we call this our clean room. This is where a lot of you will have flat files to store your paper and other clean, goodish, nice things. Uh, we have lots of demo stuff on the walls and student work. We have a light table in here as well as two other light tables out there that I'll cover in a minute. We have two cutting surface, three cutting surfaces. We have, um, this is where we set up registration. That's going to be a separate video. <clears throat> up here we have storage for things like book arts, 
more book art stuff that we occasionally teach. This is a clean sink, so no inks, no dirtiness. This is reserved for washing your cups, blah, 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 stuff like that. Um, under normal circumstances, we allow people to put their, their lunches and stuff in this fridge, and we have a microwave for food. I think these are going to have to go away during the pandemic. We'll have to hide them because we're going to have to limit that kind of activity here in the shop. Here's another really nice light table that is open for anyone to use for making film positives. Moving back out. The back side of the central area here with this gray press is the lithography area. That's the technique that's taught in the intermediate sections uh, for right now. And the back counter is also for litho as well. So if you're not doing or involved in lithography, we generally try to stay away from that area. This table here is one of the tables that we is covered entirely with a cutting surface mat. So this is where you want to cut down large things. Um, it is also a, a sort of general work table. We can do all sorts of things on it. We don't want to see dirty things happening here, inky things like that. For inky, dirty things, stick to the steel top tables because they're easier to clean. It's not that important unless you're an advanced student, but this also is an exposure unit for screens. So you may notice that down below, there's actually all the uh, equipment needed to make this into an exposure unit. You'll notice around the shop are newsprint roll dispensers. That's free to use, so use it as you need it. We have a sink here that primarily is a hand washing sink or cleaning of brushes kind of sink. Uh, as well as we have a specialized hand cleaner for special inks. Moving this way, this end of the shop, particularly in this area back here, is primarily for relief. Um, these two tables are general work tables with the steel top. They can be used for screen printing if you need them to. We have some screen storage down there. We have our paper towel stock in various places underneath tables. This counter here is, along with this sink, this whole area, just for soaking paper. And we need to soak paper prior to printing for lots of techniques. So this sink and this counter need to stay very clean. No ink work here, nothing like that. Nothing that has to get cleaned up. This just stays clean. Uh, the towels are for blotting the paper after you've dunked, them, dunked the sheet in the water. Moving this way before we curl back, we have yet another table, two more, that are covered entirely with a cutting mat surface. So these two tables get used all the time for cutting stuff down off rolls, super important. Um, and again, any cutting, where you're cutting through things, must be done on a cutting surface within the shop never cut onto the steel top tables or the vacuum tables or any other surface that is not the cutting surface because there, there's ample places that have these cutting surfaces. Here we have a paper recycling bin. There are two of them, one here and one over in the screen printing section that we passed. Prints with ink, paper with ink can go in here. What cannot go in here is cardboard food containers, so if you had to-go stuff and you, the wrapper did not go in here, um, this is just for paper. Uh, moving this way, we have some additional flat files here and here that are mostly going to be advanced students there. This is our gray tool cabinet. It's almost always just open like this. It's certainly not ever locked. It might be closed, but not locked. So we try to keep anything in here that is going to be needed on a regular basis. So it needs to be accessible. 
but it's not super valuable. So you'll find all sorts of things like files, screwdrivers, hammers, clamps, some carving tools for relief. You'll also find in this can here the registration pins that your instructor will be telling you about. Push pins, we have a container for collecting used, now dull uh, utility blades. Uh, we have all sorts of random stuff. We have sharpening tools. We have framing tools, lots of screen stretching tools. Um, we have some various painting and wood glue supplies, odds and end tools. So this is an important place. You come here frequently. Here's another light table that we have that is open for your use, as well as another newsprint dispenser. Right on the side of this uh, light table, we have various containers of drawing ink. This is a drawing ink, an acrylic based drawing ink that the shop provides to all students. <clears throat> this one is really good uh, because it's opaque, which you'll understand more for making film positives later. So we will replenish these as they empty out, but whenever you're done, this is where they go. You'll see float around the shop various carts. They do not have a specific place that they live. Um, this, you'll often see one here, but they can float around. So those are free to be used by anybody who needs them. Um, we, as per university policy, we currently have this uh, uh, disinfectant cleaner. So this is what we'll be using along with these bags and gloves at the end of every class period. Uh, to wipe surfaces down and doorknobs and stuff like that. And we'll be covering that in a separate cleaning video. One more, a few steps this way. We refer to this room as either our computer room or our storage room or both because it really functions in both ways. So step on in. We have four computers in here for students to use. Three of them, these two and that one, um, are really open for anything. This one here we do reserve, we have all of our shop maintenance and ordering stuff saved on, so sometimes we have to prioritize uh, faculty and, and monitors for that. But those three are generally open for whatever you want to do. This fourth one is the only computer that is connected to this Epson printer. We do not use this printer for printing anything in color. This printer is exclusively used to make film positives to expose on the screens and other photo related print processes. <clears throat> so we try to reserve use of this computer for those people that are ready to print their films. Uh, <clears throat> the general rule with the computers is if nobody's using a computer, you're free to use it and do whatever you want. You can browse the internet, you can write your term paper, you can do whatever you want. But if somebody comes in and they need to do printmaking related work, they get the priority. If you're doing printmaking related work, but it's like two hours of digital work and somebody need, comes in and all they need to do is print their films, then that's the highest priority. The highest priority of printing is of films either on this one or we can print smaller films on the laser printer here. And we print to the laser printer from any of these three computers here. So first priority is printing films. Second priority is printmaking related work that that's not printing films. And last, finally, is whatever you want to do. So keep that in mind. We have one scanner here. If you need better, uh, you know, larger scanner or more resources on the computers, I suggest you go to the ADRC on the third floor. Because this is also a storage room, we use this as a relay station of storage. So if you're working and we are out of white screen printing ink, you should find here a gallon of white screen printing ink. So you're welcome to come in and grab this as needed. Um, it's kind of organized by technique. So this is screen inks down here, some various other screen supplies. You have lithography inks, relief inks, intaglio and etching inks some more screen stuff up there. This stuff here is mostly stuff about running the shop, tools and supplies that we need. You don't really want to pay attention to any of this. 
However, up top, this is important to you. So this is where we store our rolls of materials that you will be using in fairly significant quantities. Notice that each roll has a container and also a label. So until you're familiar with them, it's really easy to get the Velvetone confused with the Artex, confused with the Mylar. And so you really got to know, like, oh, the, this is the Mylar. So Jeff said, cut myself a piece of the Mylar, so make sure you're grabbing the right one. There's some backstock up, back stock up top. However, the faculty or, or monitors can always bring in uh, more of these rolls from uh, my office. In addition to Velvetone, Artex, and Mylar, we also stock regular acetate. So those four types of plastic film are what we stock. We also stock special mater um, paper material, one vellum and one Mylar for the laser printer, again for printing film positives. Um, let's move out of this room now. Come back this way. If you turn there, Madison, we've got our tear bar and ruler and utility knife area where we store all this stuff. So whenever you're done using any of these things, these things, they go back here. Each one has its own spot. So you can match the label on the tear bar to the label on the slot. And it goes right back on there. Okay? Moving this way, I'm not going to get into the details of all this equipment, but this area here we think of as our intaglio etching area. The very corner is advanced only, so unless you're in the intermediate or advanced class, you really won't be going into this corner at all. These two presses here are for intaglio um, and advanced only, unless your faculty member has um, a specific project plan. We have two hot plates here that uh, are generally used only by advanced. We might use them in intro just as table surfaces. They're turned on here, but I'm not going to demo that. That'll be a separate video. We have two flammable storage cabinets right here. So that's where we store our larger containers of solvents as well as other things that are flammable. We have two small rag containers. These are for rags that have been used with solvent. On a daily basis, those are emptied into this big one, and the big one is emptied on a weekly basis. So any rag that A has been used with solvent has to go in one of the two of these, or B that looks like it might have been used with solvent. So for instance, some of our inks we clean up with soap and water, but if I glance in the trash can and I see one of those rags, I can't visually determine whether it was used with solvent or not. So in a case like that, even though you only use soap and water, we still want to dispose of the rags in the same method. So rags always go in one of these two. Um, moving this way. This is what we refer to as our solvent counter. So we store our solvents here in small usable containers. Denatured alcohol, Gamsol, those are the two primary ones that we use. There are some other ones that we use in much smaller amounts, but those are the two main ones. Gamsol to clean up oil-based ink, denatured alcohol to degrease. These generally should not be taken to any other part of the shop except right here. When you're using solvents at all, period, even a small amount, you need to take certain safety precautions. You do not want to get this stuff on your skin. The denatured alcohol in particular, 30 seconds after skin contact is in your bloodstream. Then you go directly to hangover and killing brain cells with no fun in between. So you absolutely want to be wearing gloves. Students should have their own gloves, but we do have gloves here uh, as well. In addition to the gloves, 
you want to have the ventilation booth on. Now the switch is right here. Let's zero in a little bit on that so you can really see it because it's kind of tucked away. Good. So if I flip that, it gets really loud. I'm going to turn it off just for the sake of sound. In addition to that switch, there are valves in the ductwork. So this handle right here, if you point the camera up, you can see that it goes up to that ductwork. If the handle is parallel with the ductwork, it's open. If it's perpendicular to the ductwork, it's closed. So this is closed. That's open. There are four of these. One, two, three, four, five of these. So this one's currently open. So if I were about to do some solvent work, and nobody's working here in litho, I'd want to come down, close this, so that only that one is open, which will maximize ventilation in that spot. Now, if I'm, needed, if I'm going to do some work over there and somebody is working here, I would not want to close that without talking to them and saying, hey, are you doing anything that needs ventilation? If they are, then you leave both open. Generally, these three will remain closed because they're almost never needed because we never do anything that requires ventilation there. The two places that we more often than not require ventilation are here and the solvent counter. Coming back this way, we'll have, in addition to the solvents, we'll have a lot of cleaning agents stored here. We'll have water spray bottles. We'll have Windex containers. We'll have simple green containers. There's a bunch of water that we use in various places around the shop. As long as it's water, it can be stored anywhere in the shop. The same with the window cleaner and the simple green. Beneath this counter, we store all sorts of things that are um, flat and usually rigid. Um, you won't often have to refer to stuff down here, but it's, it's carving blocks from, from some previous semesters, linoleum blocks, plexiglass, copper plates from advanced, uh, registration jigs for relief printing, and carving bench hooks for relief printing. Uh, every printing technique requires a different ink. So we store our inks in distinct places around the shop. Come around here, when you look here, all of these inks right here are for intaglio, which is an umbrella term for things like etching, engraving, blah, blah, blah. So these inks are just for intaglios. If we move this way, on this glass top table, these inks are exclusively for relief. And they're also color coded. So we put the blue tags on relief inks. And we only store relief inks here. These are where we store our brayers from largest ones like that all the way down to tiny little brayers like that. Our really large rollers mostly are stored right here. These you would not want to use unless you've been demoed by your instructor. These are very expensive pieces of equipment that we don't want to fool around with. We have two smaller presses here that are, in essence, etching presses, although we use them almost exclusively for relief. So this one and this one both. You're not using these until you've been demoed uh, on how to use them safely. Um, coming back this way, now we're back in the litho area. I think that's the cover the main parts. The last room that is part of the shop that you haven't seen yet is this one here. This is the acid room. This is used exclusively by the intermediate and advanced classes. So again, if you're in print intro where you're doing screen and relief, you won't have anything to do with this, with this room. Uh, unless there's a real emergency, here we do have a shower station. So if you were to get 
acid or solvent all over you, you would come and douse yourself with the shower just by pulling down on this triangle. And if you get acid or solvent in your eyes, you could come in here um, and all you do is push this and water's gonna start spurting out of these. So you would literally just bend over and wash your eyes for 20 minutes. Let's, let's try to never have anybody have to do that or any, use this at all. But this room is, is pretty much exclusively for learning uh, intaglio stuff and for some acid storage. Okay, coming back over here, the back door to printmaking is always locked. We can't uh, unlock it at all. There's no ability to unlock it but you can always exit. So this is now our official exit. So we're asking everybody that you enter the room only where we started and you exit the room only from this end. So we're not crossing paths more than we have to. Um, when that door closes and latches, it's locked. So just so you know, and then you'd have to come back for the other one. Other important stuff. This is our music set up here. We play music off this computer and this receiver here. We have two jacks hooked up to the receiver. If you want to plug in your phone or your own device, just use this one. There's another one that's already hooked up here. This is a fairly old computer. It's slow. It doesn't do internet browsing well at all. I don't think it's on. But, oh, it's not on right now. No. <laughs> um, rather than wait for it to come on, I'll just tell you. There is a decent stock of music on the iTunes. Um, it, it does run YouTube as well. It sometimes gets frozen on any internet browser, so just be patient. We have two places that we store brooms and dust pans in the shop. This is one of them. The other one is in the washout room that we'll go back to now. Okay, I think that's enough for this side. Do you want to do drawers? Oh, yes, thank you. Yeah. Many of these flat files here are either shop stock stuff, instructors, uh, student organization, or students. However, way down at the bottom, the last five are super important. These five are materials that are valuable, that are up for grabs, and it's labeled pretty well. So this one, Japanese and thin paper plus ruby lift and that dotted line separating them. So if I open that one up, it's a little loosey-goosey, but you see various Japanese papers on top that in theory could be used for proofing and have some value. And then I have this piece of cardboard, and beneath that cardboard I have scrap ruby lift. There'll be another video of what is ruby lift and how to use it later. Anything in, any of these five drawers is up for grabs. So here's one labeled fine art paper. So if I look in here and I see big sheets of decent paper, that's free. Feel free to use it. Sometimes we'll take prints that were rejects and put it in here because we can print on the back, we can use the back. Sometimes we use these in collages, who knows? Lots of stuff. Next one down is commercial paper. So sometimes we get donations of commercial paper. When we do, we put them in here. If you have paper that you don't want anymore and you want to donate, great, bring it up. We'll put it in here. Fourth one down is mat board. From here, we chop these down into little square chunks that we use in large quantities. And finally, the last one is Artex, Mylar, and Acetate. There's a piece of ruby lift that actually goes up here. So sometimes used, sometimes new pieces of plastic film. So this is a piece of frosted mylar, still in good shape, could be used. Could save you about, mm, that piece would cost you about 70 mm -hmm. cents. It saves you a little bit of money. Um, Do you want to talk about the best way to dry your stuff in the drying racks? without smearing other people's Sure, food. we can talk about that now. So, um, <clears throat> the rule with the drying rack is, first of all, 
as you're getting ready to print, you want to find space on the drying rack before you start and know where you're going to be putting your prints. The best practice is start as low as possible. So if I go down and I realize, okay, well, there's one open one here, but then I immediately jump to, to three with some prints. So I might start up here. There's one print there, so I might start right there. That's an empty one. I don't want to start way up here, okay? So we want the drying racks to fill from the bottom up as much as possible. Now notice that these here are one row. That's good. They are overlapped which is okay, provided that, that one sheet is not actually hitting the image of another sheet. It might be safer to just have three on this row and then go to the next rack. What you wanna never do is do two rows like that because somebody's gonna come along and they're gonna have to access something on a rack lower down than yours and they're gonna have to lift yours and then your prints are gonna slide down and get damaged. <clears throat> so you only ever want to do one row at a time and then you go to the next to the next rack. Now you may show up one day and because it's been busy the entire drying rack is full of prints and you know that some of those prints were, were printed days ago, weeks ago. You know they're dry. If that's the case <clears throat> You can test them, your finger, and very carefully consolidate them. Don't damage the paper. And once they're consolidated, put them on the lowest available rack, like that. That frees up some space, and it still kept that person's prints in good shape. Now, if you leave your prints on the drying rack, you are implicitly giving somebody permission to do that. The best practice is always leave your prints on the rack only so long as it takes the ink to dry. Now, that'll vary by type of ink. The relief ink we use takes days to dry. The screen ink we use takes minutes to dry. So you're just gonna have to get used to what the inks do. But re these were made quite some time ago. I know they're dry, I can stack them. Okay, one last room we need to cover. We didn't talk about this. This is our litho graining sink. Here, so this is sort of a litho area. It is also some screen storage. We grain our lithostomes here. Yet another newsprint. Ah, here is important. This stuff. This clipboard is where we assign screens for the semester. So the name of the screen, the name of the student, and the name of the instructor and the semester. So if you've been assigned a screen, but then you forget the name of the screen, you can always refer to this list. And this list is replaced every semester. Same deal for lithography here. These are litho stones. Name of the stone, name of the student, name of the instructor and semester. This here will be a different list, but this is where we're going to put our daily cleaning to-do list that two or three students every class will be assigned those duties and that check sheet will be right here this in case you need it is where we maintain our uh, all of our what, we, what used to be called uh, material safety data sheets i think there's a different name for it officially now um, i think it's just safety data sheets actually so this notebook you could come to the table of contents and you could be like, okay, I want to know about ferric chloride. So I could see 17 ferric chloride. So we go to 17. And I can learn about, that's French chalk. So, <laughs> but I could learn about, I think the 17 got lost. 
somehow. Somewhere in there. There it is, ferric fluoride. I think the tab just, got yeah, lost missing. its number. So this sheet will tell you chemically what's in it, what its dangers are, how to handle it, and what to do if you have a possible exposure via skin, ingestion, or inhaling a fume. So all the information for every single chemical used in the shop lives in this notebook. Do you have a, do you have a curiosity about what chemicals you're working with? Look in here. Every company that produces these chemicals must, by law, provide these. So even if you have a question about materials that you're buying or you have at home, every company that you buy it from has to provide you with this. Now they're just always downloads off their website, which makes it easy. Okay, last room is the washout room and the dark room. That's this stuff here coming in. This first one is our washout room. This is where we clean screens, reclaim screens, um, and do a little bit of storage. So we have two big washout booths here. Each booth has its own dedicated water source. Each booth has a garden sprayer and a water compressor gun. So there are four total water faucet sources in this room, two for each of these. If you look here, this is the water compressor for this booth, and this normal faucet on the wall is the garden sprayer for this booth. It's very important that all of these valves remain turned off and closed whenever they're not immediately in use. So coming in right now, these faucets are closed. So if I want to use the garden sprayer, I reach over and turn on the cold water, and that will allow me to use that. Okay? It's important that when you're not using this, you hang it back up, or at least it stays contained in the sink. Never let it drape over. Now eventually this is going to leak. We'll replace these as needed, but if it starts to leak, say on a Friday night, and it's hanging out of the booth, the weekend of water will be a disaster. Beneath this is a computer lab, so this has to stay in the booth, and it's extremely important. The last person to use that turns off the water valve there, so that if this is leaking, it doesn't go everywhere. It's also not a waste. If I need to use the water compressor, that's a different deal. First thing I want to do is come over this way, right here. I have two valves on the water line that's attached to the wall. And they're just kind of classic open and closed valves uh, for heavy duty plumbing. We have a diagram there that shows you what off looks like and what on looks like. So off is perpendicular, on is parallel to the pipe. This one up top goes to that water compressor. This one goes to this water compressor for this washout booth. So if I wanted to use this one over here, I would first turn this parallel with that pipe. See that? Next, I'm going to come over and I need to turn on the electronic motor. I'm going to zoom in on this. It's this rubber covered switch right there. It's going to get real loud. So when I need to reclaim screens or degrease screens, which we'll be demoing in a different video. That's how I do that. Now when I'm done doing that, first thing I do is turn off the electronic motor. Never leave that motor running unless the water is flowing out of the gun. That's because if, as it's running but no water is flowing, the water is cycling through under pressure and it can pop some of these hoses. So extremely important that as soon as you set that wand down, you turn the motor off. And then, you should immediately come over and close the valve by turning it perpendicular to the main pipe. 
Okay, both extremely important. Now this washout booth is just a mirror of that one. It's a little bit smaller. As I just said a minute ago, this valve is for this water compressor. Here's the wand for it. And you have a faucet on the wall, very similar to that one, that goes to the garden sprayer for that one. So if I need the garden sprayer for this one, turn it on here, turn it off. Same type of switch for the motor on this one. It's really just a mirror of the other. The big difference between this washout booth and this one is this one has ventilation intact. That's what this box up here is. The switch for that is right here. So if you are working with a chemical or haze remover, which we'll demo in a different video, you absolutely want to use this washout booth. If you're just cleaning inks off your screen, either one's fine. Or if you're developing a screen, either one's fine. But if you are working with a chemical, flip that switch, that's going to turn that ventilation motor on. It's going to pull a whole bunch of volume of air straight up there. And if you put your hand up there, you realize, yeah, it's moving in pretty significant quantities. So this is really going to suck everything out and up above the roof of the building. Let's turn that off just for noise. That's the clean room, or sorry, the washout room. Um, I should let you know that this is physically a drain, but we are never supposed to use the floor drains. So nothing drains to the floor. Instead, anything needs to go into the normal sinks. We also store here some more brooms and dust pans, as well as mops for the room. Obviously, this room gets pretty dirty. You do not want to come up here and work in really nice clothes. Last room is our dark room, and that's back here. This is where we expose screens or expose any photo process for printmaking. We have two exposure units, one which is homemade many years ago, and one which we purchased, and we call this the Newark. That's the name of the company. Um, most of the screens we expose, we use the Newark but we cure pinholes and stuff with this one. So we do use both. We have on these shelves here, random like empty containers for the emulsion, cleaning supplies for the glass surfaces. And on the wall there are the scoop coaters that we use to coat the screens. This is the cabinet that we use to dry screens. So once we've, once we've coated a screen with this pink emulsion, uh, it needs to dry, and it also needs to stay in a dark setting. So we put it in there and close this up, and 15 minutes later, it's ready to expose. Here's where we actually do our coating. The red emulsion that we use in screen printing tends to get dripped everywhere. We occasionally replace the, pla the plastic on the floor. You move these to a height that fits your screen, you lock your screen underneath that and you cut your screen. That will be demoed in a separate video. Um, this will demo in a different video. Back here is the fridge. This fridge is used exclusively for storing emulsion. Our emulsion must be kept in the fridge to prolong its shelf life. And we do have some instructions on the wall for determining the exposure of your screen and stuff like that. And I think that's the dark room. The room has two sets of light switches that operate the exact same lights. So two here and two at the other, the exit to the room. From either end, if you flip it, the lights change. And then if you're the last one out, please turn off the lights, which from the other side or this side. Please turn off unneeded fans, ventilation. All that stuff should be left off. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching.